Today we're starting chapter three, which is about Newton's laws of motion and force. So before we before we dive into this, um, I want to remind you guys that in chapter one we learned to be a little careful about our vocabulary. Right? We had some everyday words that had very physics-y meanings, um, things like velocity versus speed versus acceleration, and now we're experts in all those, so there are a couple more uh, to add to the mix. So a force, as it's going to be defined in this class, a force is a push or a pull that, uh, push or a pull on an object that changes the motion of the object. We'll have more vocabulary coming later uh, in later lectures, but this is uh, this is where we're going to start. So, so we can talk about lots of different forces on objects. We'll get to some uh, more specific examples later on, but we can you know literally talk about uh, you know pushing on an object, exerting a force on it, and that that force is changing the motion of the object. In this case, you know I have a eraser sitting there not moving, and I exert a force on it, and it and I can make it move. Okay, not an exciting example, but 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 a force at least. Um, so now that we know now that we know that these things called forces exist, we are ready for Newton's first law of motion. And while I'm writing this, I will narrate a little bit of history. So Isaac Newton um, lived around 400 years ago. and kind of figured out a lot of the, the stuff we're learning in this class. Some, some pieces of this had already been proposed or discovered, but uh, Newton kind of collected it all into one place and, and made the math work very nicely. Um, more information on that is available, but we're just, we'll just focus on the results. Uh, so Newton's first law uh, is the following. Objects in motion stay in motion, objects at rest stay at rest, unless acted upon by a net external force. And this unless applies to both of these things, not just the second one. So, um, so we'll kind of go through some, some details of this or maybe translate this into some equations that we know. Um, first of all, I guess I can annotate it in a different color here. Maybe the red will be good. So objects at rest, what we're saying here is that v equals zero, um, and staying at rest, that means that like v final is equal to zero. So here, v initial equals zero, v final equals zero, and this is our way of saying that object is not moving, right? This is something we could describe with kinematics, but we never really had an example that boring, I guess. Um, and when he says objects in motion stay in motion, what this means is that v initial is equal to v final. So an object with some velocity is not going to change its velocity. It's going to stay, not, not just stay in motion, but like stay with that same motion. So this at rest, stay at rest thing, this is just a special case of this first one where v initial and v final are both zero. Okay, now we get to the unless. Unless acted upon uh, unless acted on by a net external force. Okay, so we know a force is a push or a pull um, acting on an object. Net here is because, as we will see, we can have forces in opposing directions that cancel each other out, and if we have two forces that cancel out, they will not affect the motion of the object. So when we say a net force here, it means we need to have something unbalanced. This is sometimes also written with unbalanced instead of net, but it's meaning the same thing. External here is also important because we can have uh, a, maybe a collection of objects that have forces between them, but the whole overall thing does not have a 
force from the outside acting on it. So you can have internal forces and external forces, and forces internal to an object cannot change its motion. It needs to be a force from something outside the object. So that's what external means here. All right. Um, now, for our velocity here, if v initial equals v final, this is something that we, you know, that we did see in kinematics. Uh, and in particular, if our velocity is constant, that means v initial equals v final. And if our velocity is constant, that also means our acceleration is equal to zero. So put in more, more equation-y terms without writing an equation. Um, this is saying that our acceleration equals zero unless we have a net external force. Flipped around, that means that net external forces are the things that make acceleration, that cause an object to accelerate, that cause an object to change its velocity. And that is, um, that is the direction we're, we're heading here with this, looking at how these forces can change the motion of an object. Okay, so let's talk about some examples of forces. Um, we could write examples all day, but I just wanted to give you a few that show kind of the range, the range of things that we are dealing with here. Um, so, so examples of forces. So maybe uh, pulling a wagon with a rope. So like, you know, we have a rope attached to this and we are pulling on it, you know, with our hand or something like that. And maybe that's getting this thing to start rolling or something like that. Um, we could talk about uh, throwing an object, throwing a ball, say. And here, this is tricky because the, the, the pushing on the ball ends as soon as it leaves your hand, right? So I'll just say while touching it, once it leaves your hand, the force you are exerting on the ball is done. Uh, more, there might be another force, we'll get to that next. Um, <laughs> Dropping a plate. Okay, so we'll draw a little cartoon of this. So there are the broken pieces of plate on the ground. Um, so if I'm dropping a plate, if I let go, I'm not exerting a force on it anymore, right? I'm not. I'm not pushing or pulling on the plate. But it starts out maybe with velocity equal zero, and it ends with with some velocity not equal to zero, right? It changes its velocity, and that's because there is a force acting on it. This is gravity. Gravity is a force. We will learn about that in a little bit. And lastly, just as a um, as a kind of crazier example, we'll say uh, we have an electron that is um, that is bound or trapped in a hydrogen atom. Here, uh, we, you know, we can still say the same things about the electron's motion, um, ignoring quantum mechanics. We won't worry about that in Physics 106. Um, but but we, can think, we can say the same thing as uh, forces on the electron, um, even though it's at a much different scale. Um, it's still, at least in, in many cases, it's going to have to um, obey, obey Newton's laws of motion also. OK. Uh, so yeah, the, the point is this works for small things. It works for things, you know, around the room. We'll do one big example. Uh, the moon orbits around the Earth. So if the moon had a constant velocity, here's the Earth, here's the moon. If the moon had a constant velocity relative to Earth, it would go in a straight line and never come back. <laughs> but it does not do that. Its motion, uh, you know, orbits around the Earth, and in doing so, it is changing its velocity, and that is because Earth is exerting a force on it. So more on that later 
also. But anyway, the point is this is encompassing a very large range of sizes and types of objects and, and types of interactions. We can kind of sort these different interactions into two categories. And again, we'll have more to say about this later once we start talking about specific forces. But right now we can at least talk about contact forces versus long range forces. So contact forces are those that require something to touch the object. So um, of the examples I gave before, like pulling on the rope while well, I'm touching the rope and the rope is touching the wagon or whatever. So that's a, that's a contact force. The rope is pulling on it where it is, where it is touching it, right? Um, throwing the ball, that's, you know, I'm, I'm pushing on the ball with my hand, so I'm, I'm in contact with the ball. I can't throw a ball without something touching it. Um, and dropping the plate is different, right? Something about that is different. So in that, once I let go, the plate still accelerates downward. It still changes its motion, um, even though there's nothing touching it at that point. And that's because Gravity is one of our long range forces. So, so contact forces, you know, uh, these are just examples. Pushing with hand, rope, pulling. Uh, long range forces, gravity um, being the big one we're gonna have in this class. Uh, there are other long range forces. The other big one is electromagnetism. which we can kind of divide up into the electric force and the magnetic force. Um, you'll learn more about this if you take Physics 107. We won't have to worry about electromagnetism in this class. Gravity will be the only long range force, but I figured I should, you know, get that out in the open and say, yes, things like magnets are also, can also exert long range forces.